In general, JRE is an examination required for US. I would say JRE stands for Graduate Management, uh, sorry, Graduate Record Examination, uh, which is a tough exam. My my opinion is a tough examination. Uh, but any engineering student or any science student who is looking at going to the US is definitely has to do a JRE. Without it, there are some universities which also give admissions without JRE in the US. But in general, uh, if you don't have a JRE, good JRE score, the chances of you getting through the visa interview are very very negligible. The chances of visa office, the visa office actually takes a look at your academics and your your GRE score also before you decide whether you should be given a visa to go to the US. So you know, even if the university says don't need a GRE, please write a GRE. Make sure your score fairly good. There are two sections there. One is the quantitative, the other one is verbal. Uh, of course, both the sections are. Uh, I would say the mathematics. The quantitative is the mathematics portion, which in general is fairly easy for a student who has been doing mathematics for years. The, the toughest portion is the English portion. The verbal portion is very tough to score. Uh, the maximum score, which is normally um, given for a G GRE, is about 340. And out of 340, uh, 170 is given for verbal and 170 is given for quantitative. Uh, if you ask me what is a good score, it depends on university to university. But I would say in general, a 300 plus is considered to be a good score. Uh, anything above 320 out of 340 is considered to be an exceptionally good score. In fact, we, I have a lot of students who score 320 plus uh, uh, are in a position to negotiate scholarships better than a student with a 305 or 300 or 298. So um, I would say a, a 300 plus though is a good score, a 320 plus will be an exceptionally good score. Recently, I have a student who has scored 332 out of 340 and the student got 100% scholarship to study in the US. Uh, so these are things probably a student should probably contemplate before he can take up a call. And as I told you, the quants portion, the mathematics portion is fairly easy. So engineering student does not have to put a lot of preparation. But uh, a good score, if you want a good score, you need to take combination of both quants and verbal. So put a lot of concentration on a verbal portion. I'm sure you can do very well. OK, moving on. And it is done by ETS. Um, mm -hmm. And you again, you, the, this is a continuous examination, which means it's done on practically every week in, in some major centers across the country. And one thing many students don't realize is to book a GRE examination, you need a passport. Without a passport, you cannot book. You can't even book an examination. You can't even say, I've applied for exam. Can you book it? And I will give a, a passport a copy later. They're not going to accept it. So you need to have a passport in hand to book uh, uh, a GRE examination or a TOEFL exam or a GMAT examination. OK. Uh, next question is, is GRE only applicable for engineering or do B schools consider uh, GREs nowadays? Uh, it is generally required only for the US universities. Uh, so typically, um, it's generally required for uh, engineering programs abroad. But then off late, lots of MBA schools also have started accepting GRE, which means a good score in GRE. I mean, with, with, what happens is lots of students would have actually started preparing GRE thinking that they'll do an MS program, but later might have changed opinion uh, and might think that why don't I look at an MS in finance or MS in marketing or MS in something else. So many, many management schools have started accepting GRE also. A good score definitely is acceptable, is compatible uh, to an equivalent GMAT score. Um, and, but then as I told you, many universities in the UK don't require, many universities in Australia or Ireland um, do not require. Uh, in Germany also, they don't require a GRE. But then I always uh, ask students to actually add it um, uh, to your score because it gives an additional weightage to you. Uh, even school, universities in Singapore, like the National University of Singapore, or NTU, do not require a GRE score. But uh, if you have a good 80% marks and if you have a GRE score of excess of 310 and above, it's always an additional uh, advantage. So I always advise students to write GRE irrespective of whether you go to US or UK or Australia. And uh, when should you prepare for exam? Is it a multi-million dollar question? I always ask students to prepare when they are the third year, when they have actually a lot of time. And the validity is about five years, which means the student can write now. Um, you can even work for a couple of years. The score is still valid after that. You can even decide to go abroad after two, three years also. So, uh, but I would say, Prepare for, prepare for the examination when you're in the third year and ideally write the examination before you finish your, before you begin your final year. So um, I would say uh, then the score is valid for five years, you can decide whether to go abroad or not later. 